man in this young man's game. It's now or it's never. Mr. Foreman, that funny little grill deal you signed is starting to generate some substantial checks. Really? Now I'm just surprised it shows a big old fat guy like me to sell a deal to help people get lean. <laughs> hey Jamal, how you doing? How you doing, brother? Been a, been a while since I since I bumped into you. It was good to see you all as good, always. Good to see you. Uh first question. First, congratulations. Great movie. Um I, re I really enjoyed your casting for this. I always love to see see Forrest, but uh I mean I'm really discovering, you know, Chris Davis as a great actor. It's a great, great team of with your cast and director and everything else and making this thing. Uh, my first question is after doing Notorious as a as a biopic, like how how what did you learn from that one that you implemented it into this one? I'm sure you learned from all your films, but is there anything specifically about Notorious? Yeah, yeah that was a difference. The difference is, you know, is George Foreman is still alive. He's still here. And making a biopic sometimes when the protagonist that you're telling the story about is right next to you or near you. It gives an extra pressure, you know what I mean? And um, when I was making Notorious, you know, Christopher Wallace's life was at 24. Here, I was covering 1960 to 1994. So one of the things I learned is definitely is how to be able to connect the, the threads for so long of a narrative. And for George, I was able to connect for me in this movie is this young kid, man, it was overlooked. Now the teacher wouldn't even look at him just because the way he dressed and the clothes that he wore. He was written off. And that was something that drove George all the way through in his life, looking for, you know, approval until the point where approval has to come with inside yourself. And as a young black director myself, that's something I knew from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I wanted to direct at an early age, but a lot of my friends in Milwaukee were saying, nobody directs movies from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was written off. So those are the things I was able to learn and be able to take, you know, towards this film. 32 years of age, can Muhammad Ali dance and stay away from Foreman? After what Foreman did to Frazier, Ali would seem to have no chance. All questions will be answered. That's all you got, George? Come on. Yeah. Speaking of being written off, I know um, you and uh, Bob Title, y'all try to get Scenes from the Soul is one of the first projects that you really try to push through and didn't have all the success because of a number of factors of, of companies going bankrupt and everything. Like, um, is there anything about that film that you still want to, to uh, uh, revisit and and do and i know some of that probably played into soul food but is there anything from scenes from the soul that that you feel like you left on the table you know it's so interesting man it's like that was the most that was a tough time for me at that time we we sold that movie and it was about to come out the company went out of business and then I heard they lost a few reels, like the last reel of the movie or something. Like, you got all two acts, but you don't have a third act. I was like, what? You lost the reels? What? You know, how do you come back from that, man? And I just came back, and it was more like more personal, which is where Soul Food came from, with my family, the Sunday dinners. I didn't know that was going to have any... Uh, effect on anybody. I just felt like I wanted to tell a story about my grandmother and the dinners and the soul food. So that just tells you just stick to what you believe in. And I just try to tell stories that connects to here. And I hope people keep coming and keep enjoying it and keep seeing it. So that was a learning lesson. Sometimes in your losses, you get wins. And that was a loss from that movie not coming out. But it was a win because I was able to do, people know as Soul Food as my first film. So thank you for asking about that. I haven't thought about that in a long time. I try to forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> that. Last question, just going back to, you know, growing up in your childhood, I know that your dad worked in a plant in Kenosha, and I know, like, I mean, we're a little bit past that tragedy in Kenosha, but when you seen that, everything going on with Red House and everything in Kenosha, like, how attached were you to that, being a kid from Milwaukee and having that neighboring town go through that? I mean, like, how did that feel to you for it to be so so neighboring to your your life 
Yeah, that was very, uh, that's with me, man, because my father worked in the automobile business all his life, man, um, starting at American Motors, right in Milwaukee, and then Chrysler opened up in Kenosha, and, you know, just that hard-driven, you know, working-class, you know, individual, man. My dad would get up at 3.30 in the morning, 4 in the morning, just to drive 45 minutes to make it on working time at 7, you know what I mean, and work till 3. Um, and then hear his son that I want to tell movies. Like, where did that come from? Where, where movies? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So always a respect to the working class, to blue collar, to my family and my friends, you know, because I live in Los Angeles for since 1995, man. But what's inside me is what's, what's from the Midwest, and that's something that's never forgotten, you know. There was a story, too, man, that I remember my father getting out of the car. My mom drove him to work. This is what he was working um, in Milwaukee. And he got out of the car. I told my dad, I said, I want to work at American Motors, too, right next to you, Dad, because it looked like it was fun, all the men going to work. And my dad looked at me and says, no, you're, gonna, you're not going to ever work here. You know, I was like, why? It looks like fun. No, you're going to be doing something different. And now I look back, it's him pushing me. So those are the stories um, that you take in as a man, as a young man. Yeah. Well, always inspiration, always a great director. I appreciate your time, George. And can't wait to see you again in person, man, and can't wait to see all the other projects you got. Oh, thank you. Nice seeing you. Take care of yourself. Nice